Hold up, everyone. Today I wish to reveal to the public about a class I've been teaching since about 2010, a class on the physics hiding inside of the Egyptian hieroglyphs, how the language of the Egyptians is one is as they stated. They said that the word is the thing it describes. The word is the thing and the thing is the word. This is quite literal in ancient hieroglyphs in that each word contains embedded codes and it was through these codes with the alphabet and the signs of the Egyptian language that the ancient Africans of the Nile transferred data and scientific formulas to their children. So the way to learn chemistry, physics, biology, astrophysics, engineering, was by studying the language, the hieroglyphs. The hieroglyphs were, and still are, the core center of all ancient Kamau cosmologics. If you don't study the language, you cannot understand the Kamau. You cannot understand any of their cosmology. Language is a very profound tool for understanding how the universe is made. For example, you say the word universe, which is one, uni is one, and verse means statement, or it also can mean turn. It implies the same thing as in writing theater. You have one theme, one theme, and the scenes of the play are subplots of the one theme, but the one theme cuts through all of them, unites them all. And so you have a main subject in a sentence, then you have a verb, its action. Well, in the science of syntax, the subject of the sentence is the supreme being. And all the verbs, all the adjectives, and all the adverbs of the language are nothing more than descriptives of the subject's actions, reactions, behaviors, etc. So grammar, when you study the occult side of grammar, the deep side of grammar, it mirrors the dynamics of a cosmology or of a teaching about the creator and his creation. But I've been teaching this class for about, as I said, eight years now. I've taught it only to my most high gatekeeper initiates. I've opened it recently in the, in the year 2018 to a few non gatekeeper initiates to heterosexual initiates. And I'm going to open it now in the very near future to the world. If you watch my channel, you'll see I've hinted at this dynamic I'll be showing in this video for many years, but today is the day I'm choosing to really reveal the depth and dynamics of this side of ancient Egypt, what we call Rinkam or the Medunater language of the Kamau. I'm going to start by looking at words through the dictionary by Sir Wallace Budge called an Egyptian hieroglyph dictionary. I'm going to show you a bit of how this works, not the full formula, but we're going to play with a few words to show you how, for example, there are some young initiates, 18 years old, 19, 20 years old that I've been teaching, and I'm able to provide them with a college level understanding of math, science, physics, engineering, art, astronomy, through simply learning this language, learning the words and decoding them the way I'm going to show you all. Okay, for example, let's say here, we're on page 246 of the Budge Dictionary. We're going to go, this is called column A, and the second column is called column B. We're going to go on page 246, column A, the word chem, here chem, then it says, Krem Anrenfe. Okay, 
So it means he whose name is unknown. Okay. Renfe means his name or name his. Chem means not known. Okay. It's another word for God Almighty. He whose name cannot be uttered. He who is the mystery. It means those kinds of things. The word chem spelled slightly differently implies black. The deep black, the deep mystery, the cosmic black. So let me show you how we analyze this phrase of God Almighty. Each letter is a word. So this little circle with little lines in it is a pool of water. Okay. And each letter can mean a several several nest of words. So this circle with the lines can mean the source of something. The source, the effect, the result, a pool of water. So this means the source. This owl means to know because owls are known to just quietly stare and look at things as if they're studying them. That's the kind of correlate. So the source, this letter M means to know, to perceive, to understand. We link owls with wisdom, etc. So the source, known, these are arms that are shrugging. Perhaps I should make the screen a little larger for you all here. There we go. Okay. So it means the source known. The shrugging arms means not when you shrug your arms. So this means not. Okay. This wavy line here, this water wave means waves, sound waves, and this letter F here, this horned viper, means to transmit. These are fixed meanings. No matter where you see the this letter K, or this owl M, or this shrugged arms, or this N wavy sound, or this F snake, I'm giving you a set of fixed meanings to each letter. If we combine them, God Almighty is the source known not that weaves sound waves and transmits them. Let's repeat that. The source known not. This N means water, to weave, to create. It means sound wave, it means vibration. So the source known, the source known not that weaves sound waves and transmits them. That's one way we describe God Almighty. As the source, the mysterious deep source that can create through sound waves, what's called cymatics, and transmit them far and wide. So this is getting us to look at sound, the creator as the source of sound, vibration, that everything that is created is a vibration. Okay? I won't go too deeply into the science of it, just how we decode it. So let's look at a few more words about creation. We're going to start from the beginning with creation. Let's go to page 242a. I'm going to flip the pages here. So we're on page 242a, and we're going to go Let's see, 242A over here. Let's make sure we're on the right page. Yes, 242A, column A. Let's go to this word here. It means ankeper, here, ankeper, meaning non existent. Okay, or ankeperet. Okay, meaning there was not or non existence. I will zoom back in so you can see this phrase a little better. Oops, that's a little bit. There we go. That's nice and big. Okay, so 
here we have the word ankeper, but it's pronounced actually keper. We don't pronounce this first shrug shoulders, which means on or not. It is actually written or pronounced keper. Okay. Now. We learned the shrug shoulders mean what? Not, okay? This circle with the lines means source or effect or result. So, on keper, in fact, I'm looking for this one here, actually, this one. On keper, let's do this one here. Not the wave, you know, means what again? To weave, to create. It means sound waves, vibrations. Okay. So no sound waves created. Non-existence means when there are no sound waves. Now, the beetle keper here implies rotating space. It implies space that is rotating or spiraling or spinning because this beetle would roll a dung ball into a, an almost perfect sphere, which they call the sun. So we have not created spinning vortex space. Non-existence or pre-creation means the stage of matter where the sound waves are not spinning. It's like they're homeostatic. They are homogeneous, not moving. It implies before there were things, there was a state that was almost like frozen not moving. Okay. Now, just so you have the context, Western science has not understood this understanding, this dynamic of before creation. They can't explain the universe before the Big Bang. They don't really know what happened or what that was. We knew it was not creating sound waves, spiraling, spinning, rolling. Okay, now we go to the other word, kepera, here, keper, okay, which is written in very uh, different ways. Okay, let's take the first one, keper. This is very interesting. Again, we're in science class, ancient Kamal style. You already know. This circle with the lines means what? Source, effect, result, pool of water. Okay. So we can say, kepera, which means to be, to exist, to have being, to come into being, to fashion, to create, all these creator forms, to transform. So this is the creator, the one who made things. So what is the creator? It is the source. Now this new glyph here, this little kind of rectangle square here, means ordered space or ordered volume. This little square here, whenever you see it, just plug in this formula. It means an ordered space or ordered volume because space and volume are the same thing. This means vortexing, rotating. Okay, this here is the letter R, r which shows several things. It shows a vibrating like string, like a rubber band. It means an open mouth, a vibrating string, but it means things like to bend or to warp. When you open your mouth, you're bending and warping sound waves. It also implies the word gravity, the idea of gravity, which we'll 
we may come to today if I get to that particular word of gravity. Because gravity bends and warps masses, large masses in the sky. Okay, so here we go. Let's plug it back in. The creator is the source of an ordered space that is spinning and creating gravity. The source of an ordered space set spinning and gravitational. Remember, on Keper, no sound waves are moving or spinning. This is called before the first day. And then the first day of creation is this the creator is the source or the pool of water that sets an ordered space that spins, thus making gravity. That spins, bends, and warps things. Okay? Now, let's take another word. Let's go to page 560B. We're in 542 here. Let's go to 560B. Let's just click over until we find 560. There we go. Okay, let's find 560B. I'm going to show you about gravity a little bit. Okay, here is the word ker. Okay. Let's look at these words here with this man falling. Okay. All right. So ker, which means what? To fall, to fall down, to light upon, to meet, throw down, to overthrow. Okay. Now, also we have the word keru here, means vanquished, defeated, being thrown down. Okay, so you know the game here. Let's take the simple, one of the simpler forms of it. This one here. This little circle means what? Source, origin, pool of water, result, effect. This means a bending and warping force. So we have the source or the effect, the result or the effect of the bending, warping force. Then it shows a man falling. Okay. And that is legs, meaning how he's moving, implying how his motion is going. So what is falling? Falling is, so here's a man falling, the legs giving out here. Falling is the result of gravity. Okay? The result of the bending and warping force of gravity is what falling is. You see, it's a scientific explanation of the physics dynamic. Okay? Okay. Let's try a few more words just to give you the hang of this. Let's talk about light and the moon and the sun. Let's go into the conversation about the bodies of light and light itself. Let's go to page 23A. That's going to be way over here somewhere. Let's try this click here. A little farther in. Let's try here. Nope. Let's try here. We're close. Okay. So let's go to 23A, the word for light. It's ak. Okay. So here we have the word ak. It means to shine, to be bright, fine, splendid, glorious, excellent, good, to be useful. Okay. Here you have, it means light over here, so it implies the word light. Okay. Now, if we study this set of words, let's find the simplest form. Let me zoom out a bit so I can see the whole page here. Okay. 
we're going to take 23a here. This one here. Okay, so we're going to zoom back in so you can see. I'm going to have to pull the screen up a bit. Okay. All right, so Aku. It means light, splendor, radiance, brilliance, glorious deeds, etc. But remember, the language, the hieroglyphs, are a science lesson. They're a manual on science formulas and the dynamics of life. Now, this read, whenever you see it, it means that which is. That's all that which is. Okay. This bird means to evoke, to become, to come into being. To evoke, to become, or to come. We know our famous circle with the line. Okay. Which means source, limit, result, effect, pool of water. And then we have a sun disk with light beams coming from it. So this last glyph is called the determinative. It has no pronunciation. It's just telling you the subject of the discussion, what formula we're studying. So we're studying light. And the pronounced part of it is yak, yak. OK? This first letter means that which is, or that which. This second letter, this bird, means comes to be. And this circle glyph means limit. So light is that which comes to be the limit. This only makes sense if you understand Einstein. OK. The fastest thing known in the physical universe is the speed of light. 186,000 miles per second. Per second. That's very, very fast. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light. The greatest speed limit, the ultimate speed limit, is that of light. If anything tries to approach light speed, it will gain mass. It will convert its energy, its acceleration energy, into mass, become heavier, and th thus move slower, never able to surpass light speed. So light is that which comes to be the speed limit of all things. Okay. Now, let's take the word for moon to make this very easy to follow. That'll be on page 40. Let's go to page 40B. Here we're, here's the word Abed, Abed, which means moon. Okay. Now, let's find a simple version of this. It should be the three. Here we go. Okay. Now, this first glyph means the moon itself. So that means the moon. This kind of stylized hand means to give or to make. It's letter D. And this dot with a circle means one body orbiting another. So the dot is the main body, and the circle is the secondary body orbiting the main body. So this glyph, what's called the sun glyph, basically means an orbit, something orbiting something else. Let's repeat it. This means moon. This word, this letter means to make. And this glyph means an orbit. Okay, what is the moon? What is a month? A month is when the moon makes an orbit around the Earth. This dot with the circle something means an orbiting body, something orbiting something else. It could be the moon around the earth, the earth around the sun, a star around a star, doesn't matter. Just implies something orbiting something else. So a month is when the moon makes one orbit around the earth. You see? The word 
is the thing. The word describes the actual event, and the event is described by the letters of the word. No language in the world does this, where the actual letters are science formulas. Okay? Now, let's look on page 123a. We're just kind of playing here to show you how this works. I give the full code in the classes. Let's see here, 123a, the word un. Let us zoom out a wee bit. OK. Un which means an I. Okay, so we're going to go here on page 123a to the word on, which means to turn a glance towards something. It also means beautiful, but we'll focus on this meaning of to turn a glance towards something or to look at something. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see easier now. Here we have it, on. Okay, or anu. Okay, what is glancing? Observation. It means basically to observe, to look at something. This arm glyph means your arm is like an army, meaning a force, a military force, the arm of the government. So the arm means a force or act. Okay. The waves mean waves, water waves, sound waves, creation to write, okay? The T means mass or womb, matter, mass, or the womb of a woman. This is called the coiled Fibonacci thread, the golden spiral, and then an eye. So looking at something, observing something, is what? What is observation? It is the force by which waves create mass into Fibonacci spirals. We're getting very deep now into quantum physics. You may have heard the, it's called the double slit exper experiment where the scientists would put a camera on, a, on waves and then when the camera was on, it looked like particles. When the camera was off, it recorded as a wave. This happens on quanta, quantum levels of matter. When you look at it, it looks like a particle. When you close your eyes, it behaves like a wave. There's something they've learned in quantum physics about the observer. When you observe something, it changes the state of the thing you're looking at. So observation is a major force that creates the universe. We call this observer Amun. But observation or looking at something is the force by which waves are created into mass through a Fibonacci spiral. Okay, so here we have the word, the, the N letter, the wavy letter, waves, and the letter T here, this half loaf hemisphere, means T, wave, uh, matter, mass, or womb of a female. Observation is the force that turns waves into matter particles that obey the Fibonacci golden ratio. So this word is how we would teach our initiates, our younglings, about how the observer created waves to become particles. How the universe went from nun, this cosmic ocean of waves, of still waves, into all the unlimited things we see, the unlimited particles. Okay? So I pray you're getting an idea of how this works. Let's look at maybe three or four more. Let's look at knots.
Let's go to page 99A. Let's see here, a little farther in. Right near it here. Okay. Again, we're in physics class. 99A, let's find the word for not. Atenu, it should be atenu. Okay. 99A, the not glyph. To revolt friends. To bind, here it is, to bind. Knots, here we go, knots, okay. So now that we found it, we'll zoom in. Okay. What are knots from a physics point of view? Here we have the word atenu. This is atenu. You've already seen quite a few of these letters. This uh, flowering reed means that which is. This T, this loaf symbol means mass, matter, or womb. This wavy letter N means to create, to draw, to weave sound waves. Okay. This bowl here, this water bowl, means particle. And this means the coiled Fibonacci thread or string, as in string theory. And then we have a thread that's turning on itself. Okay, and these little tick marks. So, atenu can be translated from the scientific point of view as that by which mass is woven into particles according to a Fibonacci ratio in three ways. Now, to understand this three-way part, you have to understand string theory. And in string theory, there are three major ways in which cosmic strings weave themselves. From a simple to a medial to a complex string intersection. Okay, so we say it again. That by which mass is woven into particles according to a Fibonacci thread and threaded in three quantum ways of string theory. What this is telling you is that waves become particles. We have the wave symbol here and it becomes the particle symbol. So a knot is really where waves cross each other. The intersection of a wave, according to three types of weaving, this is all in quantum physics, the three kinds of string weavings in string theory, that a particle is nothing but a knot on waves, when waves kind of interfere. Their cross point, their node, is what we call a knot or what we call a particle. Okay, let's look at time. Let's go to page 100A. Okay, again, it's giving you a taste of how we do science, how I've been teaching science for the last eight years to my initiates. Okay, here's the word atru, ater. Okay, atru means time, season, or year. Let's zoom in. Here we have atru. You know a lot of these glyphs already, again. This flowering reed means that which is. This T means mass, matter, or womb. This R here, this open mouth, means the bending or warping force to swell, bend, warp, or the gravitational force. And this glyph here means time. This here, it's like a little plant, plant stalk. Okay. Now watch this. What is time? 
the subject is this glyph time time is that which mass bends and warps this is getting very Einsteinian the Kamau are defining time this glyph here this stalk glyph is time because plants grow in their time in their season so time is that which mass bends and warps they're defining as Einstein said the greater the mass of an object the slower its time frame we discuss with speed of light that which comes to be the limit when an object is moving and it accelerates towards the ultimate speed limit of light speed its energy of velocity will convert into mass meaning it will get heavier as this very fast moving body gets heavier and heavier and heavier it slows down its time frame so as an accelerating body accelerates two things happen it gets heavier so its mass increases and also its time frame slows down that's why they say if a man's in a rocket ship going at the speed of light he'll come back much younger than you are because for him time slowed down literally time is that which is bent let's do it again okay time here is that which mass bends okay so we're talking about how time and the speed of light bends with an a body that's going at a certain velocity okay okay so let's see we will try maybe two more let's look at the goddess net or knit let's go to page 399b that'll be over perhaps over here somewhere okay here we go okay the goddess knit or net or nath she's pronounced by some uh, greek pronunciations and let's see here let's scroll down here she is okay knit knit okay this is a very interesting word I'll show you why it's so interesting in several manners 399b all right here it is net okay the simplest form of it is let's find the simplest writing of it here okay this means the water wave letter n and the t which is mass matter or womb then a weaving shuttle weavers shuttle for a loom then the word for goddess okay so Nit is the weaving goddess in Egypt. She owns all weaving. But she corresponds in physics to string theory. The dynamics of cosmic strings and micro and micro or quantum strings. Okay? So she's the weaver of quantum strings and cosmic strings. Her temple was basically the study of string theory. Okay, so what is this weaving goddess? okay she weaves mass she weaves matter this n means to weave this t means matter the weaving mother is she who weaves matter like on a loom okay it's defining her by the letters okay what's interesting is there's this word net here but it has a male with a beard, a creation god who established the world. Now in Egyptian, the letter T is always feminine. If a word ends in a T, it is a feminine word. 
But notice, we have the word net. Any word capitalized in this dictionary refers to a deity or proper noun. So this is a god who ends in the feminine letter but has a male form. So this weaver is androgynous, says here, self-produced, virgin goddess. It implies androgeneity. Okay. I thought I'd mention that part just for one's food for thought. Okay. Let's look at, look at the god Nu, the great cosmic ocean. Let's go to page 349. Let's go to page 349A. 349A. Nu. Okay. Nu. Let's find, here it is, how it's spelled. It can be spelled with just this bowl of water and this little quail chick. Now, this quail chick is new for you. The chick here means to grow. Okay, to grow. It can also mean space, a space, like a small space. So the quail chick means three things. It means grow means a space or means a vibration. Okay, because it's a small bird's going to grow. It occupies a small space and they vibrate by chirping to their mother all the time. Okay, so remember the bowl means particle and this means to grow. Put it together. The great cosmic ocean is where particles grow. Or spelled this way, it means Sound waves grow. The great cosmic ocean is the place from which, from whence sound waves grow. Okay, here we have the god Nu. Capital N means a proper noun. The mass of water which existed in primeval times, celestial waters. Here is a god, it means the deified primeval water, primeval water whence everything came. Okay, also spelled this way, waves and particles growing. You see waves, water means waves, or sound waves, or creative waves. And then we have particles, and then the word, the, the letter U, which means to grow. Okay. So, let's do... 427B, we're going to wind down now, do our last couple or so. 427B, that's around here, okay. 427B, Renpet, which means a year. We saw what a month was. It's when the moon makes an orbit around the, the earth. What is a year? Okay, well, remember this glyph here. Okay, means time. The letter T here, this hemisphere means mass. This tick mark means one unit. And this means an orbit. Okay. So we put it together, it means a year is the time the mass, the earthly mass, makes an orbit. Okay? If we go to, let's say, this version is a little simpler. It's got fewer glyphs. It's a simpler formula, definition. So this means time, and this dot with a circle means orbit. So a year is the time the Earth orbits the Sun. That's what a year is, the time of an Earth orbit around the Sun. We'll do one, my last one on page 689A. Let me just go to volume 2 here to 689A. 
let's try one here. Okay, 685, 789. Okay, we'll conclude with one of my favorite words or science formulas, which is acceleration. Sakak. Okay, so on page 689A, we have the word for acceleration to hurry. Let's zoom in. Okay, here we have it. This is the word sakak. Sakak. Okay, which means to hurry, to hasten, to accelerate. Okay. So this is a formula for the initiate scientist, ancient Africa, to understand what acceleration is from a physics point of view. Okay. This first glyph is new for you. It means to bend, to arc, or to slow down. Okay. Or to cause. This, you know, is a source. Okay. Okay. And this is a new glyph also, which means increased mass. The letter T at the bottom is mass, and this flowering plant here means to increase because the plant is growing. So increased mass. This means to become or comes to be. This means limited. Okay. We'll look at this one here again. So it means the bending and slowing caused by increased mass comes to be limited. Comes or comes to limit. Make sure I'm finding the right one I want here. Comes to limit by the taking away. This X means to take away, to undo. And this glyph with an arm and a little time symbol, that same thing we saw for time, a piece of time. So acceleration is the slowing and bending caused by an increase of mass that becomes the source of the taking away of a piece of time. It's very complex uh, physics. It's basically saying acceleration bends and slows down due to acceleration, a mass, and takes away its time frame, a piece of time. When you accelerate, the body increases in mass, but also loses time. This is a textbook definition of Einsteinian formula of acceleration and the bending of time of an accelerating body. Okay, so I know we got quite technical here, quite involved. Each of these words and all these entries are formulas. They're actual math formulas. They're science formulas. They're psychology formulas. They're all kinds of embeds of data. They're like small CD disks of information. Okay. And I pray you enjoyed seeing how the gatekeepers look at this language, how we study this language, and how I've been able to teach young people truly the most profound quantum physics, macro physics, astrology, astronomy, mathematics, medical teachings, just from these two volumes of the dictionary. The word is the thing, and the thing is the word. So I pray you enjoyed this tutorial on the physics and the science in the language of Egypt. Dwawend.
โคเจปู